All right, we'll get started. Welcome everyone to the CNS Connect webinar series. My name is Amy Smith and I am the Certifications Programs Coordinator for the ANA. Today I am joined by Sarah Safari, who is going to share her expertise on personality marketing, how to five times your business with apple pie and personality. Um, a few announcements before we get started. If you are a CNS, you can earn a one CE for today's webinar in the new professional development category. So I will put the link to the survey in the chat towards the end of the webinar. So make sure you fill that out to get your CE certificate. If you're watching the recording, you can use the same link to get your, your certificate there. Um, if you have questions during the presentation, please use the Q&A and the chat feature and myself and Sarah will both be moderating that. Um, but please feel free to use the chat to engage throughout the webinar. So let me introduce Sarah Safari to you. Sarah is a fitness entrepreneur, business coach, and health scientist that has helped over 5,000 professional men and women get their life and health back by executing the novel blueprint created in her first business called the Three-Step Framework to Optimal Health and Confidence. Following her success across consumer clients, Sarah co-founded CE Owned in 2019 with a mission to help online coaches grow and scale their business using the framework she used to grow and scale her own. As an international CEO, Sarah travels across countries while managing hundreds of clients and a team of 12 abroad. In her easy to understand and compassionate style, she uses neuroscience principles to remove mental barriers and increase business results for her students and clients. Her techniques can be applied to any individual of any background in any location, and she is ready to share her expertise with us today. So let me turn it over to Sarah. Awesome. What's up, everybody? Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to share a screen. So I don't like talking at you guys. I kind of just the biggest thing is just we're all interacting with each other. And I want to get a good idea of where you guys are at as well. So uh, in the chat box, you'll see kind of like in the middle bottom corner, uh, as we kind of dive into some questions just with yes, no, so I can get an idea of where you guys are all at. We'll go ahead and get started with that as well. So I'm going to share screen. And then if you guys can all see my screen to start off, just comment in the chat box, yes, so I can make sure that you guys can all see my screen. So just comment yes in the chat box if you guys can see my screen. Awesome, we're getting some yeses. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So we're gonna talk about personality marketing. Amy did a fabulous introduction. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. Um, and so, you know, we talked about being able to do that with apple pie and I'll kind of get, go into the story of what that's all about. Uh, but before we do that, I'm just gonna give you guys a very, very quick intro of me and like where I started. And then we'll kind of dive into the ins and outs of being able to grow your business from that route specifically. So I actually started off, I went to school. I thought I was gonna be a lawyer or a doctor or something like that. My parents wanted me to do that. And so I ended up graduating. And then once I graduated, I went abroad. I went abroad for like a month. I saw a couple, they were teaching Spanish and they were like on this awesome deck and they were going to do this excursion after. And I said, hey, what do you guys do? And they said, you know, we're online Spanish teachers. And so it was this first time. And at the time I was working as a personal trainer and like planning on going to school to become a lawyer. And so it was this first time that I saw this like big discrepancy between, okay, you can, you can actually work online, travel, do all the things that you want to do and still be able to bring that income. And so I went home and I quit my job. Uh, <laughs> I moved out of my parents' house. I paid a coach a bunch of money and uh, I opened a gym all within like a, a one month period, probably less. And so I, I listened to everything that coach said, and it was actually very successful. The problem was I had no idea how to run business. I became a coach. And during that time of becoming a coach, I thought that I had to wear one hat. And that one hat was being a coach, being a really good trainer, helping people get fit, helping people get healthy. But I didn't know that I also had to be a really good copywriter and good at advertising and good at marketing and good at making an offer and all of these things. And so because I had no idea how to run a business, I was working 16 hour days. And at the time I was running Facebook ads, they were very, very cheap. And so all these clients were coming in, I was making a lot of money. And so I had this discrepancy between working 16 hour days, uh, having money coming in and feeling absolutely miserable. And so it was the first time that I 
I, I call it golden handcuffs, where I was tied in these golden handcuffs of having these finances come in because I grew up very poor um, and feeling absolutely miserable. And so what I ended up doing was I completely shut that gym down and I started all over from scratch online. Now, for anyone who's ever tried to do put in the principles of offline, so in person, online, you probably have learned very fast that you will fail fast. And the reason for that is you need two completely different strategies in order for you to be able to do that for yourself, because what ends up happening is the strategies that work in person do not work online. And so it took me several years of struggling and like trial and error before I was able to learn the principles, learn the things that were needed, and then be able to be successful online. And so today I want to dive into some of those principles, specifically what we talked about, which is with personality marketing. All right, guys. So let's dive in. So what, what does personality marketing even mean, right? All it means is using your unique characteristics, your unique quirks, your traits to be able to differentiate yourself from everyone else, right? And so if you think about it this way, everybody is teaching some variation of the exact same principles, right? And nobody is reinventing the laws of thermogenesis or all these different things that are there. But at the end of the day, people are hiring you as the coach and not your program specifically, right? Because they're not hiring you for macros or what has what nutrients or what doesn't have what nutrients. They're hiring you for you. And so that's why there's we, we both, we all know that there's a lot of coaches out there. And so if you want to find, okay, how can I differentiate myself from the rest? This of many is going to be one angle. And we'll kind of dive into the many others as we go out through the months of how you can stand out from the crowd in a way that most other coaches don't. And that's why they end up struggling online. Okay. So this is the red ocean and blue ocean strategy. So there's two oceans, okay? The ocean where all the sharks swim. So that's, you know, PTs who are modeling each other. They'll, they'll see someone doing something to do the same thing. Or, you know, they'll see someone give nutrition advice and then they, they give the same kind of advice or in the same way. Or they're talking about the laws of macros or thermogenesis of carbs or protein, all that kind of stuff. That's what. That's what all the nutritionists, that's what all the coaches are doing. And so the blue ocean is when coaches are leveraging their own unique characteristics. It has nothing to do with what you know, right? So it's being authentic. It's being flexible. It's sharing your personal story with your audience. It's talking about where you were and where you are now. What was your biggest struggle, right? So for example, when I first started, one of my biggest struggles was I actually struggled a lot with binge restrict eating. And I had no idea that that was something that I struggled with. This was before I became a coach. This is before I started helping people. And so for anyone who's not familiar, binge restrict eating is when you restrict yourself like crazy, maybe like you eat egg whites and chicken and broccoli and all that. And then all of a sudden you binge, you have a big binge, you, you know, have a bunch of ice cream, you, all these things, you feel very guilty about it. And you are either over exercise or go back to under eating. And so you're stuck in this cycle. And so that was something that I had struggled with prior to becoming a coach and at the beginning of. And once I healed from that, this was one of the biggest things that I worked through. It was one of my biggest messages. It was one of the things that I always spoke about. I was like, hey, when I first started, this is what I struggled with. This is what I was working through. And it took me getting to X, one big moment, to be able to Y, Y being get to the result, get past binge restrict eating. So one of the biggest things is how can you use your story in service to your audience, right? So I think a lot of times we'll say, you know, either I don't have a story. We all think, well, maybe I don't have a story or maybe my story won't resonate or maybe my story isn't good enough. Whatever it might be that we're thinking, what we're thinking, we'll get to kind of some of that stuff from a mindset perspective as well. But all that matters is that you're one step 
ahead of your ideal client, right? You don't need to be a zillion steps ahead. You just need to be literally one step ahead of your ideal client for them to feel very connected with you. And one of the biggest things that we'll notice is and I'll say, I'm not at my goal yet, or I haven't gotten to this level yet. And it's not about that because, for example, if, if a client sees a supermodel and that person's very fit and all that kind of stuff, there's no relation there because maybe they want to get fit and maybe they're o- overweight or they're obese and their coach or their trainer or their nutritionist looks like a supermodel. There's, I'm not going to be able to relate to that. But if I have someone who's two steps ahead of me, three steps ahead of me, I'm going to be able to connect that person a lot more than the supermodel looking person who seems to have like no problems in life, looks absolutely phenomenal. So in a lot of those cases, when you perceive it with that lens, you're going to see a lot more connection from that place. Guys, if that makes sense, I want you to just comment in the chat box makes sense. I want to make sure you guys are with me. So if this makes sense, just comment in the chat box makes sense. And if there's any questions as we're going throughout, feel free to ask them. I'm I'm more than happy to address them as we're um, chatting as well. So if that makes sense, just comment makes sense. It does. Ditto. Awesome. 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 Getting a lot of yeses. Perfect. Perfect. All right, let's move on to the next one. Oh, so let it in. There we go. All right. All right, guys. So this is kind of what we're going to dive into. And this is what the whole topic was about. So we used to have this client. Her name was Lauren. She was known as the apple pie fit chick. And she went from zero clients to 50 clients within a one month period of time by making one big change. Okay. Like literally from zero, she had just started her business to 50 clients from making this one big change. And what she would do is she was very, she was fit. She was the apple pie fit chick. She would have her sports bra on. She would, she would pop onto a live video. She had this Facebook group with a community of people and she would get onto the Facebook group and she would sit there with this big tray of apple pie and her muscles were popping out and she's sitting there and she has a fork and she's <laughs> with the fork, she's dipping into the whole thing of apple pie and she's, she's literally eating it on a Facebook live video while she's talking about flexible dieting. And she didn't do this one time. She showed up and she did this every single Friday. And so Remember when we talked about blue ocean and red ocean? What were all the other coaches saying, right? The the red ocean is what all the other coaches say. So if the co- all, of all the other coaches say is you got to do keto, you got to do intermittent fasting, you got to talk about macros, you got to count your calories, you got to weigh your food. She was getting on there and she was like, listen, at the end of the day, like you got to enjoy your life too. And I do this every Friday, I eat a whole tray of apple pie. And so People felt connected to that. People felt related to that. They weren't like, okay, if I hire this person, I'm going to have to like weigh everything all the time, measure everything, and then think about all the nutrients of everything that's going on. And then look at this and, and then, then feel overwhelmed. They felt like, wow, that's doable. That makes sense. I can still eat this. I can still enjoy this. I can still enjoy my glass of wine every Friday night. I can still enjoy having chunky ice cream, big fan of chunky ice cream over here. And so it's, it's looking at it and saying, what is it about me? That's something that I do that may, even maybe guys, I'm afraid of showing to an audience because I think that won't make me look professional. And a lot of the times the things that you might think is the thing that isn't making you look professional is the exact opposite of what's going to help you connect with that person the most and at the highest level. Okay, so that's one of the biggest thing you want to think of is like, hey, what are what are my unique quirks? What are my unique characteristics? What are things that stand out about me? And how can I do things differently in a way that's going to connect with that audience? Okay, so that's one of the biggest things we want to focus on. All right, so we're going to dive into what most trainers do here. Let me just X out of these messages. All right. Perfect. All right. So what do most of us do? What do most coaches do when we first hop on? Right. So most of us haven't found our voice. So we borrow someone else's voice instead. All right. And I'm going to ask you guys to be honest here. Uh, Well, first, let's let's see for a second. How many of you guys are currently actively have a business? Nutrition, fitness, all that stuff. How do you, how many of you guys currently actively are running a business? 
Yes, yes, I do. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so keep keep that coming. And if for, from all of you who are saying yes, you guys actively have your own business. How many of you are online, like fully online? Comment online if you're online. All right, we got one person working for someone else. Awesome, awesome. Fully online, online, awesome. We're getting a lot of online. We got some hybrid. How many of you are hybrid? We got one hybrid so far. Okay, so you guys are, most of you guys are already online. Okay, awesome. Perfect, so that gives me a good idea of where you guys are at. So for those of you who are online, how many of you guys are using some form of social media for your promotion to, to show your expertise, all of that kind of stuff. So anyone who's hybrid, just say social, if you guys are using some form of social media to promote yourself, just say social. I need to, but so uncomfortable. Stephanie, I feel you. I feel you. Social, not at all. Okay. All right. So a lot of you guys are, we got a few who aren't. This one's for Stephanie, very, very quick. Stephanie, when I first started out, I absolutely hated social media. I was the person who had no social media, had like my mom and my dad following me, maybe my best friend. Um, and uh, I, at that time, I thought that the only way for me to be successful online was via social media. And so I did those things. So there's a few things. One, that's not the only way that you are able to uh, um, attain clients or a multitude of ways. Uh, two, is it, is it a method? Yes, but you can always find a way to do it that it feels the best and most authentic for you. Now I'm going to ask you guys all to be, a, be very honest with me. And we'll see how much honesty we get here. All right. How many times have you guys seen maybe a competitor, a colleague, someone you know, someone you follow who's in the same space as you, say something, do something, make some kind of a video, some type of content, some kind of caption, and you guys modeled that content. Comment yes if you saw a competitor, you saw their content, what they did, and you modeled their content to make it using the same content, but you said it. Comment yes. If you have, comment yes. We're all absolutely unique and we don't look at anyone else's content. All right, we got one awesome Megan. She's taking inspiration. Yes, yes. Jennifer, yes. Awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna count inspiration, not try to copy. Yeah, of course. I'm gonna I'm gonna add, uh, take uh, Megan, Jen, and Stephanie some brave souls out there. Now, a few things on this. The first thing is we need multiple different messengers for the exact same message, right? And so there's nothing wrong with taking inspiration and turning it into your own message. I could hop on here and have a conversation with you guys, and then someone else could come say the exact same thing, and you might resonate with how they said the exact same thing better than how I said that thing. So always remember we need multiple messengers for the exact same message. But here's the catch 22 and here's where you guys wanna be careful as well is if all of us are doing the exact same thing and making the same content and saying the same things and what makes us different than, any, than anybody else. And this is where I'm trying to really hit home the personality, the characteristics, the traits. So cool, awesome. So one of us is gonna say, awesome, I'm gonna go ahead and use this content. But how can I twist it into my own? How can I put like my quirk into it? If you're gonna do a reel, for example, how can you make it quirky to how you would do it? How can you put your, are you bubbly? Are you serious? Are you dancey? Are you fun? Like, what is your trait and how can you throw a little bit of that into it? So when someone sees you, they're like, oh, that's Stephanie. I know, exa I know exactly what that. Like, they can resonate with you. They know your characteristics. So by the time they even become a prospect, they get on the phone, they already know, like, and trust you. They've already built those factors because they've seen consistency in your personality and who you are and how you're showing it off. Does that make sense, guys? Comment makes sense if that makes sense, what I just said. So again, different variations. We need different people for the exact same message, but how can we just turn it unique into us, into how we speak, into how we connect, right? Comment makes sense if that makes sense. 
Makes sense if that makes sense, guys. Let's take a look here. Yes, this makes sense. Makes sense. Absolutely awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, the last thing I'm going to say, and this is the hat that I used to wear as well a lot, so guilty as charged, and that's, that's, why, um, that's why I teach it now, is we try to prove ourselves by sounding overly scientific. So we go into the science behind food. We go into the science behind movement. We go into the science behind health and longevity and the nutrients and the minerals and all that kind of stuff that's, that's involved. Now, is that important? Yes. But should you speak about that most of the time? No. Right? Because again, your ideal client probably isn't a nutritionist or a dietitian or a personal trainer. They probably want to get fit. They probably want to get healthy. They probably want to manage an ailment or a disease or increase their life, or they want to solve a main pain or problem in their life, right? So those pains comes from, I wanna be able to look in the mirror and feel confident naked. I don't want to feel like every time I'm about to jump in the shower, I have to turn off the lights or I look down so I don't see myself. I want to be able to have sex with the lights on. I want to be able to take a, go up the stairs without feeling like I'm completely out of breath. I want to feel like a good parent instead of feeling so exhausted that when I get home, I all I can do is lay on the couch. But what I really want to do is be able to get, get up, take my kids to the play park and play with them but I can't do any of those things because of how I've been feeling. Those are the problems you want to solve. Those are the things that you want to speak to. And so when you find out who your ideal client is, when you find out who your niche is, those are the things that you wanna to speak to because those are the things that hit home. Okay, so that's, that's the biggest thing here. All right, let's move on. And so, Diving into that, there's two things. This is where trainers and coaches, and nutritionists, and dietitians think sells versus what actually sells, right? So if you're on a, on a call, and, and let me just get an idea. How many of you guys, when you're about to take on a client, do you guys, like, how many of you guys hop on a call with someone? So just comment call if you guys hop on a call before somebody becomes a client. Just comment call. Okay, we're getting a lot of, okay, awesome. Most of you guys are doing calls. Does anybody do it like just over messenger? Like just over chatting with them or something like that? Or are we all calls? So comment messenger if you guys ever like do it just over chatting with somebody. Okay, we're all doing calls. Good, good. That's, that's, a, that's a step in the right direction, guys. That's good. Awesome. So here's, here are the two kinds of conversations that we end up having. The first conversation is where you're, talking about deliverables. You're talking about all the things that are included, what application you're using, what software you're using, um, all the calls that they're gonna get, the customized nutrition plan they're gonna get, the, the, the goodies that are involved, right? You're talking about the science behind the results. You're talking about anatomy and try to impress them with your knowledge of the S1 joint or movement patterns or X nutrition deficiency, what, whatever it might be, right? And what actually sells, is connection, it's accountability, it's support, and it's feeling cared for, right? And, and again, don't get me wrong, do people care about that stuff? Of course they do. Of course they care about what's included. Of course they, they care about all things that are in it. But here's one thing that I want to drive home specifically with this one thing. You're never selling the, the plane ride you're selling the destination, right? So you're not going to be like, yeah. And then once you get on the flight, you're going to have no space and you recline and someone's going to recline behind you. And then you're just going to feel even more squished. And then you're going to have to eat plain food. And then you're going to feel so tight because you haven't been moving for so many hours. There's no room in the plane to walk around and you're absolutely exhausted, but you can't fall asleep sitting up like this. And it's super cool because for no reason they have the AC on in the plane. You're going to talk about the vacation. You're going to talk about when they get there, where it's really sunny and it's nice and you're at a five-star resort and they welcome you with a welcome drink and they give you all the goodies that's what you're talking about so what am i what does that even mean you're not talking about the main deliverables you're talking about the result so you're talking about 
what we just said, what were their pains? What is the result? How they're going to going to be, be able to walk around with their kids without feeling out of breath. How they're going to be able to have sex with the lights on. How they're going to feel vibrant and energetic and feeling like they're going to be able to do a lot more things. How they're going to be more financially successful because of how good they're going to feel and how sharp and clear they're going to feel after 10 years of feeling absolutely exhausted. Whatever their pain is, you're talking about the result. So for example, We'll have, you know, some, sometimes we'll have clients, they'll say, well, you know, like what they want to know what's included, Sarah, like, what do you mean? Like, I can't like not talk about it. Of course you're going to talk about it, but you're just not going to make it the biggest thing because they just want to know that you are the vehicle for the results that they're going to get, right? They want to know you're the vehicle for the result that they're going to get. And so how can you show that you're the person who's going to take them from where they want, where they are now to where they want to be? Okay. And you do that by talking in a result oriented fashion. Now, for example, if they, I'm going to just quickly role play with you guys. Just making sure I'm not over, over talking here now, let, quickly, quickly role play with you guys. So if they say like, okay, awesome. Like that all sounds great, but like what's included and you only say, oh yeah, awesome. So in it is going to be, we're going to give you access to XYZ app. You're going to have, we're going to go over your customized plan. We're going to kind of find out the ins and outs of where you're at, your body X and X. And we're going to do all of these things to make sure it's a fit. But at the end of the day, Nancy, drive back to the result. At the end of the day, Nancy, the whole goal is to help you get to that last 20 pounds and feeling super energetic so that you can play with your kids again every night when you get home, kind of like how you and I have been talking about today. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, that makes sense. It sounds awesome. So talk about the deliverables, drive it back to the result. So if they say, how do, but how am I even going to get there? And you say, oh, it's the plane ride. But when you get to the destination, you're going to have this, 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 and this, and this. Does that make sense, guys? Comment makes sense if that makes sense. Comment makes sense if that makes sense. Comment makes sense in the chat box if this is all making sense for you guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Getting some yeses. Perfect, guys. All right, and so this is some of the stuff that I that I was already ch chatting with, which is understanding your ideal client's pain point. So what if it's, I can't do these workouts. I'm so tired of dieting. I feel like a failure. Every time I start working out, I give up. My trainer told me to start eating carbs. I just want to be able to play with my kids. I'm so tired of being out of breath. I want to be a good mom to my kids. This is so intimidating. I feel so restricted. I feel like I can't do this. I feel like I have to count everything. I do this for so many months and then I stop. I've done so many diets, but my metabolism isn't working. My metabolism is slow. No matter what, it, I never get the results. So why am I saying this to you guys? Because your goal as the business owner, and we just chatted, almost all of you are business owners. And if you're not, start thinking like one, because even if you work for someone, else, for someone else and you are able to think this way, you're going to be able to grow, help that person grow, grow a lot more. And you're definitely going to be getting a raise and it gets to the point where you want to go on to your own. Awesome. You have all of those skills and no one can now take away from you. Because the goal is for you to genuinely understand the ins and outs of how your ideal client thinks. For them to hop on and say, wow, a lot of you guys are on social media. For them to be like, wow, you literally took the words out of my mouth. And you know that your copy, your content, all of that kind of stuff is phenomenal. When you get a message from an ideal client, they say like, wow, like I felt like you were just speaking to me. They say, wow, I, I, I know you just wrote that caption. It was public, but I felt like you were just speaking to me. And that's when you know you're going in the right direction. Because it means you know the ins and outs of how your ideal client operates. And I'm going to give you guys a very quick tip for this that you can do right now, literally right now, as soon as you get off this webinar, is pick two ideal clients, whether they're your current clients right now or not active clients. Active clients, if you have them, even better. Say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and uh, if, if it's your active client, it'll be a lot easier. Like, hey, can you hop on a 15 minute call with me? And you just hop on a call with them and you ask them a series of questions that's going to help you learn 
what their pain is, what their struggle is, not from your perspective, from theirs, not what your words from theirs. And you're able to take those words, record it, transcribe it, and verbatim, now you have copy that you can directly use from your ideal client's mouth. And if you think that that will resonate with more people like your ideal client, then you're wrong, right? Because you, you're going to be able to bring in more people. And so a lot of times you think, well, I know what their main pain is. That might be true, but you might not be saying it in a way that hits home for them. So you might be like, oh, like they have trouble with, with losing weight. They have struggle, trouble with losing weight. And they're saying, my metabolism is shot. The, the problem, why, the reason why none of this is working is my metabolism is shot. It could be the same thing, the same problem, but they, they're thinking in a different way. And so if you're able to meet them where they're at, you're going to be able to see a lot of a lot bigger of a difference. Okay. So that's the biggest thing here is really, really understanding your ideal client. All right. So, and then this is where you're, we're talking about the integrating it into your persona. So the gym is so intimidating, for example. And now how do we integrate this? Here's why my clients work out wherever they want, wherever they feel the most comfortable. This is just objection handling from a marketing perspective before you even hop on a call. So we're all hopping on a call. So how can we handle objections? And I'm just going to say one other thing here. Some of the best content I have ever created was when I was on a sales call and I had a bunch of objections and I was able to overcome those objections. Once I got off that call, I found a way to overcome that objection in my marketing and in my copywriting. And that brought on even more leads because what it does is you're dealing with the objection before they even get on the call with you, before they're even having that conversation with you. Okay. So the next one is I'm so tired of di dieting. Well, here's why I eat chunky ice cream daily and still fit in, in a bikini. Like I told you guys, I love that chunky ice cream. So it's the same thing as when we're talking about the apple pie fit chick, right? What do we say? We said, okay, cool. So, you know, she, she still looks really good. She's very fit. Her muscles are popping out and she's still doing this. She's still eating apple pie every Friday. That's awesome. This girl's doing this. She says, I can do the same thing. I want to work with her. I want to work with the person who says that I have to eat on a strict diet and count everything all the time. Cool. All right. Last one. I want to be a good one, good mom to my kids. Well, me and my kids work out into a game, bring it into a game. My little girl helps mommy do push-ups, for example. So let's say if you're someone who helps mom specifically, mom specifically, oh, my daughter helps me cook X, Y, and Z. It's something that we use to spend time together, right? So how can you overcome very, very, your ideal client's objections in a way that they'll be like, oh, that sounds good, right? I can do that. That sounds doable, right? And so it goes back to one of the biggest things here. And it's that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. We got a nice sparkly background for this, but it's very important. I'm gonna say it one more time. How much people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And the reason why this is really important is because as coaches, out of a place of really good intention, and I know this as a coach and with someone who's worked with over thousands of coaches at this point, is our intention is to help. And because we wanna help, we try to help a lot from knowledge. And we try to help through knowledge transfer. When it's only a very small part of the equation that helps someone feel cared for. That part builds authority. That's good. It helps show that you know what you're talking about. That's good. But what we forget is that's only 10% of the equation. The rest is getting to know you, building trust with you, understanding why you're different. Uh, your characteristics what are the things that are different about you other than you being really good at what you do that will help them want to want to work with you and that's one of the biggest reasons why I used to and no longer believe in competition because of the same thing that we said earlier because because at the end of the day we need multiple different messengers for the exact same message so for those of you guys who are on right now and I'm just going to pause this real quick we're all in the same industry, right? So all of us are in the same industry teaching some variation of the exact same thing, but we're all completely different people. And so Karen or Nancy is probably gonna relate with one of us better than the other. And that's cool. 
because you don't want to work with a client who probably doesn't connect with you either. You want to work with a client who resonates with you. And you know how you do that? Through very polarized messaging. And so one of the biggest things that we're afraid of, and I'm going to go back to sharing screen over here. One of the biggest things that we're afraid of, guys, is having a very polarized message. So be, instead, we go vanilla, and I'll explain what that means. So having a polarized message is saying, I hate keto, or I love keto, and it's the only way. Intermittent fasting is like starving yourself. Intermittent fasting is the best way to live longer. How can you have a very polarized message based on what you believe in? Okay. Instead of, you know, here, here's a vanilla message. There are many different ways that you can diet and all of them are great. Okay. Right. So like it's, it's, you're not really drawing anyone. You're not really pushing anyone away. And by doing that, you're bringing on no clients instead of saying, here's where I stand and here's why. And then sticking to that, what you're going to do with that is you're going to attract certain people and you're going to repel certain people. So I'm just going to use this as an example because it's very easy. If you are pro keto, you are going to repel everybody who is anti keto and thinks it's the worst thing in the world, right? But that's good because if you're pro keto, you want to attract people who are pro keto or open minded to becoming keto to reach X, Y, Z goal. Right. And again, keto is just an example. But whatever your belief is, whatever your methodology is, however, you're helping people achieve the result. How can you say it in a very polarizing way so that that ideal client can say, boom, that's my person or wow, that is not my person. Unfollow. That's the fact you want. Right, guys, if that makes sense, I just want you to com comment below and say polarize. That makes sense. It's very important. This is what I used to be very scared of doing, and many of our clients as well. So just comment polarize if this is making sense to you guys. Just gonna wait for you guys to dive in. Comment polarize if this is making sense. You guys are doing some of this, you're just kind of getting the mind brewing on, on strategies on how to be able to start making this happen for yourself as well. All right, let's take a look. Polarize, polarize, awesome, awesome. Just so I get an idea, how many of you guys have done have been doing that? You've had a very strong polarized message. Comment yes, if you can just be like, yeah, this is my message. You immediately know, this is my message. Comment yes. Or if you're kind of confused, just don't say anything. Stephanie says, no, I've been so vanilla. Girl, we're gonna add some chunks to your ice cream. <laughs> Okay, awesome. So most vanilla to need to work on this. Vanilla, awesome. Okay, well, not awesome, but good that we're all recognizing this because this is gonna be one of the biggest things that's going to, I, I don't wanna say make or break, it's a little bit intense, but it's going to make a really big difference in you attracting clients or, or not attracting anybody at all. And so when we're in the middle, we're nowhere, essentially. If it's just vanilla ice cream, we got to add the chunks, guys. We've got to add some cookie dough and some Oreos, some brownie. We've got to get the good stuff on there, okay? So that's the biggest thing here, okay? Awesome, awesome. All right, let's dive into the next one. All right, so you know what personality marketing is? Now what? So all it is is your values and your personality tra traits equals your unique uh, personality marketing tactic, okay? So what are your values? Just break it down. So if you, I, I, I'm just going to assume some of you guys right now, like, okay, this girl sounds really cool. You know, she, she had the apple pie. Like, should I do that with X food? Like, how should I, how should I do mine? I'm just trying to start figuring mine out. So I want to work backwards with you guys right now. Okay. So well, what are your values? Is it trust? Is it community? Is it fun? Is it honesty? Is it education, communication, connection? What, what, what is it? What is it for you? Right? Like, what is it that stands out for you? Because the goal is if someone, and a lot of you guys are using social, that's why I'm using this as an example. Someone pops on your social and they, and they look at it. You want them to be like, oh, this person means this. I was recently interviewing someone on a podcast and uh, they're like a celebrity chef. And they asked me a question and they were like, okay, so um, I, I think I asked a question about values. I can't quite remember. And uh, he said, well, Sarah, he turned it on me and he said, Sarah, what do you think my values are? And I was just like, 
productivity, cooking, and fun. And I just, I just made up. I had seen, you know, I looked, researched him before I was going to do the interview and that was it. And he was like, cool, you got two of the three values. And I was like, oh, cool. But then I took a step back and I thought about that. And I was like, I barely know this guy other than the fact that I just looked him up enough to be able to educate myself for this interview. And I've looked at his profile once and I just got two of his three values. That's really good. It means that he's very, very clear in his messaging as the, in the way that he presents himself. So the whole goal is how can you guys do that for yourself? How can you create values in a way that if someone pops on, they're like, oh yeah, this is, this is what this person's about. It just, it, what is this person ab about? What are they reflecting? When I see them, what do I feel? How do you want to make people feel when they hop onto your page? right? And how can you reflect that in your content and start doing more of that, right? And once you do it that way, you'll notice that it's almost never going to be vanilla, ever. All right. So com combining both your values and your personality to entertain, educate, and motivate, right? So entertainment, it's making them laugh, it's making them happy, it's making them feel, make them feel right whether that's happy whether that's um empathy whether that's sadness and hearing your story for some kind of a purpose wh whatever it might be make them feel right educate this is what we're mostly very good at as coaches we probably all of us got this down building authority teaching something positioning yourself as an expert and all that is is being really good at explaining and teaching things in a way that people understand now with that i'm going to say one thing one part that some of us might not be good at and i'm just saying this from you know after working with a lot of coaches is we might be really good at knowing the thing well we might, might not be good at teaching the thing that we really know and so what we end up doing is we teach it in a more very very complicated way and so the best way to be able to transfer knowledge from yourself to your ideal client is to be able to simplify. So always ask yourself, okay, I have this really complicated scientific um, concept in my head right now. I really want to teach it because I think it's important for X reason. How can I make it super easy? Write it down. And then look at what you just wrote down and say, how can I make it even easier? Erase write it down, make three to five ver different versions of what you just made until it's stupid simple. And that's when you're going to notice, oh, wow, I'm getting a lot of engagement. A lot of people are commenting. A lot of people are saying it's helpful. It's because it makes sense to them, right? It's because it makes sense to them. And so I'm just going to give a comment and some of you guys, you know, might agree or disagree, but it's just the, it's just the fact. So during the time of the Donald Trump uh, election, he got a bit, one of the highest voter turnouts. And, and when they analyze how he communicated, his communication was at a fifth grade level. So the way he talked about politics was at a fifth grade level. And he had the highest level of engagement and voter turnout because he was speaking stupid simple. And so taking a step back from this, how can you take very complicated topics and simplify them so much so that anybody and their dog can understand. That's when you know the topic inside and out. And that's when people are going to be attracted to your content a lot more. So that's one thing on education that I'm going to assume you guys are all doing, but maybe not at the level of making it stupid simple. And, and I might be wrong. So let's just ask it. If you guys, if you think that you're maybe making it a little bit more complicated than it should be, just comment complicate. So I have an idea of what you, where you guys are at. So if you think, you know, your content is maybe a little bit more complicated than it should be, comment complicate. So I can get an idea where you guys are at. And if you think it's simple, just comment simple. Just so I have an idea. Varies, complicated, okay with this. Cool, sounds like some of you guys have, have this down. If you think it's simple, just say simple as well. So that's okay as well. Just so we can get where you guys at. Somewhere in the middle, maybe like eighth grade level. <gasps> awesome, Nia, <laughs> thanks. Not sure. Cora, if you're not sure, go ask some of your ideal clients if, if your content, what, what it means. Be like, hey, can you check this out? Let me know, what did you get out of that? See what they say. 
you'll get a lot more clear on what that is. Stephanie working on it. Awesome, awesome. Cool, cool. So some of you guys have this down. Some of you guys are like in the middle and some of you guys are trying to figure it out. So wherever you're at, make it even simpler. That's it, okay? And then the last one is motivate. So encourage, right? And people love motivational things. Encourage them, whether it's through quotes, through songs, through dancing, through copy, through videos, whatever it might be. What's your personality? What's your values? Now, how can you use motivation in a way that's going to resonate with your ideal client in that way, okay? So that's the biggest thing that you want to work on. So let's pop on to the next one. All right. And so I just want to see where we're at. Awesome. So we're on the last few here, guys. So just bear with me the last couple of minutes. So this is just kind of like rounding up the, everything that we've learned, right? So using number one, using your unique quirks and characteristics to stand out from the crowd. Right. And the second one is integrating pain points into your solution based program and how that can be a vehicle to actually helping people in a way that's different than most people. Right. How can you be able to help them? How can you be able to help them relieve their pain? Right. And then the last one is caring first teaching second. And by that, I mean, I'm not saying that you guys don't care. Everyone who's in this business is in this business because we care. And so it's not about the intention. It's about being able to show that, right? It's about showing that care through a lot of the different metrics that we talked about. And so I'm just going to pause for one second before we move on. And if there's any questions uh, go ahead and put it in the chat box regarding anything that we talked about. Maybe if it's not about what we talked about, go ahead and put it in the chat box. If uh, if there's no question and this this all makes sense and hopefully was helpful, just say valuable or value might be fast, a little bit easier. So if you have any questions, this is the time to go ahead and ask them. If this was helpful, just go ahead and say valuable. All right, value, value, awesome, 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 guys. That's perfect. Good, good, good. All right, and we're going to finish off with one last thing that I want to dive into here. And this is something, again, um, we're best at teaching things that we struggle with along the way. And so one of the biggest lessons that I've learned and that I would love to share with you guys as you are coming up in your business is that not everything is binary. Most things are on a continuum, right? So if things are on a continuum, what does that mean? So for example, it's not, am I overweight or am I not overweight? It's how overweight am I? Is it, It's not how I'm very wealthy or I'm not wealthy. It's how wealthy am I, right? And so this is where things become really important in the lens that we view our businesses. And so a lot of the times we'll think, you know, I have to get to X goal. I have to get this many clients. I want to be able to help this many people. I want my business to get to this level. And so if, if it's binary, it's this or this, what ends up happening is let's say in six months, we don't hit the goal, then we failed. But if it's on a continuum and we're just adding brick by brick by brick by brick until we get to that next goal, we're constantly able to progress. And a lot of the times we get so stuck in the binary of, well, I didn't achieve it, so I failed. I didn't post that content, so I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I didn't move forward today. I didn't get this many clients uh, this month, like I said, so my business is not moving forward. When in reality, it could be, I was able to improve my program. I was able to bring my website up. I was able to uh, bring in a systems that consistently helped other people. And so now you are just building the building blocks to be able to grow your business instead of saying either made it or I didn't. And so one of the reasons why this is important and what I like to look at it this way is because 
if you if you view things on a on a perspective of binary, I either made it or I didn't. I'm either successful or I'm not. I'm either helping people or I'm not. Then you're setting yourself up for a 50-50 and a potential disaster instead of here are the things that I'm doing. And although I have not gotten to X result, I'm here now. I was here and I'm now here. Or I was here and I'm now here. And I'm just one step away. And so if we're able to remember that, we'll all, we're never going to set ourselves up for a disappointment and we're constantly going to be able to move forward in the things that we need to do that are going to move the needle forward in our business and helping ourselves and helping other people. So that's, that was the last thing that I wanted to say. Um, oh, I just realized <laughs> we had things on mindset. So I'll just go through this very quick. Um, and so the, the most important thing here is that Nothing stops you in the face and forces you to look in the mirror like business. And so some of the questions you're going to end up asking yourself is, am I good enough? I feel like an imposter. I'm a coach. I'm not a salesperson. What if I never make it? What are the, you know, what are people going to think? And so I know a lot of us, you know, have, have said that we've gotten to that point where we're just, you know, we have imposter or we have all of these struggles. And I can tell you this. There are two things you need in order to be successful in business. One is skill and the other one's going to be business. Uh, sorry, it's it, the other one's going to be mindset. And so you can't have one without the other. So you can have all the skills in the world, but if you have a bunch of limiting beliefs that are stopping you from getting there, you're going to stay stuck. But if you have the best mindset and other skills, you're not going to have that as well. And so the biggest thing is being able to do that in a way where you're able to achieve both and all of those things at the same time without abandoning one for the other. Okay. Um, and so the last thing here, and this is for anyone who got value out of this, who's looking to grow their business, whether it's nutrition, personal training, coaching, um, all of that online or offline, uh, there's, there's essentially two ways of getting there. One way is just kind of trial and error, trying to figure out things on your own, YouTube, more webinars, books, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the second way is just actually getting the A to Z blueprint from someone who's already done it who can actually get you there at a way faster level. And so this is the pitch. This is just an invitation for anybody who's gotten value out of this, who feels like, hey, I'm, I'm ready at that step. I want to be able to get myself to that next level. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop the link um, in the chat box as well here. Amy, I don't know if here is a good spot. I'm just going to drop it right here. Yeah, that's perfect. Awesome. Cool. So, so for anybody who's looking, you guys can go ahead and uh, book your call there. And then I'm just going to finish off with the last few um, people who have worked with us. So this is Karina. And uh, in her first six weeks, she had literally no business and she made 15 K and then went to 20 and went to 30 within a very short period of time because she had one one big thing missing in her business and we were able to create that build systems and she was able to grow that way um and then this is justin when he first started he had 94 cents in his account and he was able to go up to 14k within the first couple of weeks by being able to really pack down his offer in a way that was able to help people and so that's the biggest thing guys again if you guys have any questions, anything like that, feel free to send a message or uh, email or, or whatnot. And then um, if you guys want to go ahead and book a call, essentially all it's going to be is just kind of talking about where you are now, where you want to be, and then how to be able to fill that gap so that you can grow your business online and scale and be able to help more people. Um, yes. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. Can you post a link for booking a call again? It should be right above you, Linda, but I just sent it. So if you've got it, just let me know. Sarah, I see what happened. It was just posted to the host. So let, oh. let me let me post it to everyone here. Sorry about oh. that. Okay, there we go. There we go. That and works. I also posted a link. Sarah will be joining us. She's doing a six part series. So this was part one of six. So she'll be joining us on July 28th. And I, the first link I put, I said July 22nd. So that is wrong. It is July 28th at 4 PM. Um, and there's a link there to register. And she's going to be talking about building offers so that I know that was a pain point for some of the CNSs um, that we're not really sure where to start with that. So that should be a really great uh, topic. So, um, and there's a link on the webinar website for you to sign up for all of Sarah's webinars too. So we have 
awesome. Six well, dozen. Guys, yeah, there's a there's a lot of things to go over that's hard to go over in, in one <laughs> in one sitting. That's why we decided to break it up. But very excited for anyone who's yeah. struggling with that uh, building an offer. But one of the big one one thing really quick thing I'll say on that is um, you can be the worst marketer in the world. And if you have an amazing offer, it won't matter. But if you're a great marketer and you have a terrible offer, you're constantly going to be chasing more marketing to bring in clients. So um, I think it's going to be the most important thing. And it bring, it's what brings the highest value to your clients as well. So um, I'll just leave it at that. And I think uh, we can call it a day. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. And thank you Thanks, so much, guys. Sarah. Um, like right. I said, check out the website to register for any of the upcoming webinars. All right. All right. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Sarah. You bet.